Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. Just a couple of announcements. The fall semester calendar at the Institute is all set up and we have some great classes on nutrition and obesity, biology, statistics. We have a great statistics teacher who people dread taking that course and everybody always says the same thing after they get six weeks in. I love statistics. So if you've been scared half to death to take the hard science courses, we have teachers that will make you love it. Psychology, the diet and lifestyle intervention course is going to be offered in the fall without the celebrity teachers, but also at a significantly reduced price. So if you've always wanted to do this and haven't been able to afford it, call us so we can talk about this very special opportunity that combined with some other certification classes we offer, you can save up to $1,338 if you take these classes. So anyway, um, this week we're going to be talking a lot about gut bacteria. And uh, it's fascinating to me. I think I can make it fascinating to you by talking about things about it that are important for your health and also pretty cool to understand. So uh, what we eat affects the composition of the gut microbiome really quickly, by the way, both the type and the quantity of bacteria, and this in turn affects your health in a lot of different ways. Adverse changes to the gut microbiome are a factor in the development of so many diseases. The list is too long to go through right now. Positive changes to the gut microbiome are essential in order to recover your health. Um, now, I've talked a lot about diet and microbiome, but as it turns out, um, a lot of other things affect your microbiome too, including humor. Apparently, our gut bacteria really enjoy a good laugh sometimes. So I found this study. I just thought it was amazing. I wanted to share it with you. So this researcher in Japan enrolled 24 healthy people and then 24 people who had atopic dermatitis in a study to measure the effect of laughter on our gut bacteria and health. So at the beginning of the study, the patients with atopic dermatitis showed negative changes in the gut microbiome. This is what you would expect to see. Uh, lower populations of lactobacilli and bifidobacterium, the good guys. Higher populations of staph, enterobacteria, the bad guys. And these patients, um, fecal levels of bacterial polyamines, which are fermentation products of bacteria, much, much reduced. And they had impaired intestinal barriers. They really had leaky gut, is what they were saying. The participants were assigned to one of two groups. One group watched a funny movie every day for a week, and the control group watched movies that were not funny daily. Fecal samples were taken both before and after the week of movie watching. Intestinal bacteria for healthy controls didn't change no matter what kind of movies they watched, but patients with atopic dermatitis who watched funny movies had significant positive changes, which included increased populations of the good bacteria and decreased populations of the negative bacteria. And these changes took place in only one week. Well, I think as health providers, we have to continue to emphasize the importance of diet and exercise as a means for preventing, stopping, and reversing disease, but we should all remain mindful of the fact that health requires, excellent health requires more. Humans are more than just the physical bodies that we inhabit. Mental and emotional health have a lot of, um, a lot to do with our overall health, humor, social engagement. You've heard me talk about these things before. So I've decided maybe our prescriptions for health ought to include a subscription to Netflix. <laughs> Watch funny movies. Um, and, you know, it's a whole lot less expensive, by the way. Netflix is a whole lot less expensive than drugs, and there aren't any negative side effects. But um, this is just one example of how our body responds to our state of mind. When we're laughing and, and um, having a good time, our overall health improves. So fortunately, I do enough things I can laugh at every day to keep myself fairly amused. And, you know, I think maybe that's why my health, one of the things that makes my health so good. All right, on the same topic of um, the gut microbiome, lots of consequences of eating a high fat diet, some of which are obvious like weight gain, others not so obvious but even more potentially damaging to health like adverse changes to our gut bacteria, um, which actually can result just from eating too much fat. So to demonstrate this, researchers randomly assigned Sprague Dolly rats into two groups. By the way, Sprague Dolly rats are bred specifically for research, that's why you hear, hear them referred to. One group was fed a regular rodent diet with 6.4% fat, and the other was fed a high fat diet with 34.9% fat. Um, now in the rats fed the high fat diet, there were instantaneous changes in the gut bacteria. Some beneficial bacteria were reduced. And uh, there, was, there were increases in pathogenic bacteria, which was followed by inflammation in both the gut and in regions of the brain responsible for eating behaviors. There's a, there are lots of messages that go 
from the gut to the brain through the vagus nerve. They travel via the vagus nerve, so we know that there's huge connection between um, the gut bacteria and the condition of the gut and the brain. So damage, when this happened, resulting damage to nerve cells that carry signals from the gut to the brain caused miscommunication between the gut and the brain, and the brain no longer sensed fullness, and this led to overeating, all right? So, um, Many studies have shown that these uh, that, that change diets affect the microbiome in humans, causing similar effects, and that um, these similar effects in humans can also alter communications between the gut and the brain, uh, which can interfere with satiety and increase cravings for high-fat, high-calorie foods because it appears that those cravings may be a way for pathogenic bacteria to cause you to eat more food that they prefer. Pathogenic bacteria, bacteria like the remnants of animal foods, and they like junk foods, high fat, high sugar foods. So cravings for those foods are your bacteria sending a message to the brain saying, eat stuff that feeds me, all right? Your, your, your beneficial bacteria, by the way, likes fiber, likes the byproduct of plant foods. According to lead, re lead researcher Christoph Zaja, I probably just butchered that, by the way, when we switch to a high-fat diet, we, we reorganize our brain circuits. These reorganized circuits and inflammation may alter satiety signaling. Well, the study of the connections between the gut bacteria and many diseases, including obesity, is still very young, and I think eventually it's going to provide a lot of important clues about how we resolve health issues. The challenge will be, in my opinion, to prevent this from turning into a reductionist dream, which is, and it's already been talked about a little bit, we'll design all kinds of designer probiotics that will treat obesity or autoimmune diseases or, you know, specifically tailored for a person's microbiome instead of recognizing the complexity and the multiple mechanisms and issues that lead to the development of diseases and obesity. But the take home point from these studies is really clear. Eating a poor diet has an, an instantaneous and negative uh, effect on health, and, and, and it doesn't matter how we measure it. It's weight gain, gut bacteria, we can think of a lot of different ways to measure it. The good news is that eating an excellent diet has an immediate and positive effect on health too. So, um, you know, feed your good bacteria. That's the message here. And uh, the good bacteria likes the good food. Isn't that convenient? The bad bacteria likes the stuff you're not supposed to be eating anyway. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.